Knox at three, two. And Devontae Adams is a knob. I hate him. He beat me literally on every team. Devontae Adams. Dude, I was up against him in both the finals I lost. But what's up, everyone? Tom Hayden here. CPDL. Playoff week one recap show. We got Jax on. Jax, say what's up to everyone. What's going on, everybody? Hi to recap an amazing week one of the season five CPDL playoffs. Dude, it really was an amazing week. It really was a fucking awesome week of battles. We really got some good ones. And actually, both two guys chilling in here, Angelo and uh, KJ, were two of the contestants with a bye. So they got to sit back and relax and watch all the battles. Yeah, no they, stress. They didn't even play. Those guys didn't even play this week. <laughs> yeah, they, they got to, like, freaking relax this week and say, ah, let's let everyone duke it out to play us, the big dogs, the top dogs. And they're talking about winning the final. So hopefully we see some upsets some more upsets, because Jax, we got three upsets in the six battles we got to talk about. Let's get into the first one, which unfortunately for you was not an upset. You were the nine seed playing the eight seed KD. KD was able to get the oh, two no, one victory. Not, it was for sure an upset. I thought he was the eight seed and you were the nine seed. So on paper, I'm he talking. was definitely an upset though. Okay, definitely an upset though. But I'm talking on paper seeding wise. I'm talking like March Madness bracket seeding wise. Technically, it oh. was an upset. Oh, no, technically it was not an upset. But, yeah, this was a close game, I thought. Jax, I really thought you played well game one. Game two, I was like, oh, my God, I think Jax is going to win at one point. Like, 2-0 victory over KD, that's insane. And then KD was able to take it, but what's it called? What really impressed me was in the beginning of game one, KD bulked up that Togekiss, surprise, survive a vicious rend from uh, Dragovish with more than 50% health. It was like the Togepi tanked that Ficious Ren with the Eviolite with the Follow Me. And then turn two in game one, I thought this was a throw from KD. He used Fissure on his Lando. He used Fissure, like a 30% accurate move, when if he just put damage out, he could have killed Ndidi a turn earlier. But because he used Fissure, he missed. He didn't get any damage output, which I thought was just way too risky. Like I thought that was like a throw game one. I was like, what's going on here, man? But if KD does any damage... The expanding force from Ndidi cleans up the Lando and the Togepi. It wouldn't have. It would have KO'd. It would have died a turn earlier. It wouldn't have been able to KO everything, which was in my notes. And then we see Ndidi Mail and Pre-Marina come out at this point. KD's Ndidi Mail is so fast. It was faster than the Cinderace, which shocked me. And that's when I knew it had to be a Scarf. But it didn't KO the Cinderace. Cinderace KOs the Ndidi Mail. And uh, Pre-Marina is able to get the KO with the Dazzling Gleam. Jax takes game one. Then, uh, what's it called? Uh, I thought Jax was winning until the Dracovish switch on turn three. Then Darm went down. That was huge. And DD Female didn't put as much pressure with Expanding Force as DD Male did. And at this point, Jax's Dracovish and DD are both low health. Uh, KD's, KD only has Lando and Pre-Marina. I thought Jax could easily win it from here. A vicious run expanding force is what I thought would win it for Jax. But then KD switches out the Lando. Oh no, Lando protects and Didi follows me. Dracovish hits a protect. Pre-Marina Dazzling Gleams gets a double KO. Cinderace comes in, gets burnt from the Scald, and then isn't doing it enough even without the burn, I thought. So even if you didn't get burned there, I don't think Cinderace's Iron Head would have killed you before Scald's Scalding did, which was crazy. But then game three was just a turn of leads, I thought. Game three, it was the uh, Mind Shao and DD male into the Darmanitan and DD female. Right, I think it was in DD female. I actually didn't write that down. But the choice, the helping hand choice scarf expanding force is able to get the KO into Darm. We saw it just miss the KO earlier with that helping hand. It gave it the extra boost it needed. Katie took the momentum super early. And uh, Jax's and DD actually protected yet yeah, turn one. So that was what was great for KD too. Then uh, the fish comes in, but I think that expanding force crit was just the end, of, like the nail in the coffin for that game three. Because expanding force, if it doesn't crit, Dracovish survives, is able to put some more pressure on. With the critical hit, Dracovish goes down. Uh, Mindshell then KOs and DD with a close combat, and it's a four to one Pokemon lead real early in game three. Jax, I'm sorry your season ended that way. You actually, I think you had a 4-0 Pokemon Advantage Game 1. KD had a 4-0 Pokemon Advantage Game 3. So this was crazy how much the, the tables turned. The turntables switched back and forth in this battle. 
I really enjoyed watching it. Both of your streams were very different. Katie's music was loud. His voice was low. You had, like, really calming music, and you were talking through your plays in a very calm manner. KD was, like, in a party, like, oh, 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 oh. you know, it, it was really fun to see the disparity. So I was having fun watching it from both your perspectives. And, yeah, Jax, you got anything on your match before we move on? Sorry season ended, man. I was ruined for you to make it to, like, the Armored Conference Finals or whatever so we could play each other. Yeah, it's was, it was a shame. You know, that 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 crit had to happen. Yeah, but, the crit was know, a nail in the coffin, stuff I thought. That you can't control. Yeah. I was talking with him uh, after the match, and he had... At all. Um, I couldn't hear Togetic him. and the Lando in the back, and if I could have survived that, that that crit, and hit the Ndidi and took it out, mm -hmm. that would have been the fastest thing on the field, and my... Um, you my Rosemary would have had right. a huge advantage against the Togetic in the back and everything like that, which sucked, so... Yeah, you just um, would have had to call Protect right at that point, and the game's not over. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. Like, if I could... I That turn, if I would have survived, I would have ended up picking up the KO on the Indeedy, and then for the rest of the game, I would have had the most fastest Mon. Yeah. And the type advantage for his back Mons, too. So it was, like, yeah, rough. But, I mean, that's Pokemon. That's what are you Pokemon. Gonna do? That's you a know? game we yeah. chose to play. That's the game we exactly. chose to play. Yeah, you know, and it, it obviously, I think you could tell from my reaction as soon as I saw the crit, I like melted into the ground. Yeah. Um. You know, but he played really, really well. He did. I misplayed uh, in game really two. Well. I I targeted the Lando, even though I knew that he was going to protect the Lando when I should have. That's where the momentum the, swung to. Yeah, the, the, I should have attacked the premier I was ahead there, and I don't know why. I said it as soon as I clicked in moves. I was like, he could just dazzling gleam, though. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. So yeah. I went to that. But, uh, you know, fair play to him. He played really, really well. Really well. And I wish him the best of luck against uh, against KJ. Yeah, he's this, got no uh, joke of opponent. His, his opponent beat me week one. KJ took the bye week. Was able to get one of the top seeds, top two, uh, top seed if I'm not mistaken. I think he was one. Angela was two. So it's just like, Katie's no yeah. joke, but he's yeah, got he no joke for the opponent. Yeah. We got the one eight matchup in this one, so I'm excited to see how this shakes out, and uh, if Katie is able to win next week. But we'll talk about that more in the predictions. And let's get into the next match, which was actually my match, Pengy versus me. And Jax, I'll let you start. This match was was really, really interesting. I just watched it actually uh again a little while ago just to watch Pengy lose again. Oh, that's um, mean. <laughs> well he he did beat you. So I could see why. <laughs> exactly. exactly. He did beat I you. Mean, but it was I, I it was a very, very close match. I just don't I think that you played very, very well with uh the offensive pressure that yeah, you could put to. on with the Togekiss and playing your protects really, really well with the Blaziken in all three games. Um, he positioned really, really well like he usually does yeah. after the game one yeah. and game two to Andrew. ensure that he could pick up uh, the win in game two. Um, was able to, to use Sludge Bomb very effectively against your team, get some pivotal crits as you were able to get some pivotal crits that... Um, was big also for your Togekiss and everything like that. Um, I think you almost surprised yourself to gain three with the win because you were like, if I just hit this and then get a crit, then I win. Well, and you like kind of question, <laughs> you threw it out there as a question. We were playing on uh, showdown, so I usually hit next turn, but it said skip to end, not next turn. So I got it spoiled for me before I saw it happen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So that's why I was like... Yeah, because as soon as you lock it in... And then that's when I clicked in my head. I was like, I know I get the crit here because I don't kill with the psychic without the crit. Right. So I... Yeah. Yeah, I questioned it and I was like, it's over? Yeah, but you were hitting for some for some big boy damage, definitely, with yeah. that Togekiss. And he... I don't know. I. It was a big thing to do afterwards with with his reaction to... Uh, stuff on social media and everything like that about not being able to prep, I guess. I did what I call eating the garbage, where I was like, you know what, I'm just going to say something, even though I probably shouldn't. I'm just going to eat the garbage. And I tweeted, like, hey, man, you had a lot of time, because he was tweeting about it not having enough prep time. I was like, you got 13 days. 
And I, I you know, I let him know, like, hey, I'm not trying to be an ass. I'm not trying. I'm trying to be as nice as possible when I'm saying this. He had 13 days. That sounds like poor time management, not a league scheduling thing. And he understood. Yeah. And he was like, yeah, no, it just sucked with the holidays because high roller, they just did it that week, and then the match before to decide who he played was four days late. So he had less time to prep for high roller. Then this one snuck up. He, he ended up losing both of them. So I feel for the dude because he was like, he, this Pengy cares a lot. Pengy loves playing Pokemon, wants to win as many tournaments as possible. And he's upset he didn't win this one, which I fucking love. I love that passion. I love that energy. And he's a good fucking battler too. So, you know, like that's yeah. why, you know, I can't, I hope he comes back next season. If Well, I'm not even coming back next season, but I hope he comes back in the future seasons when I'm here too. And what's it called? Uh, is able to put on a show and maybe win this thing one day. And I'm, I feel lucky to have beaten him today. Yeah, but my building process really started with the uh, Kiss and Lipard support. And then I was like, you know what? Offensive Kiss looks good. I slapped a Choice Specs on that bitch. And was like, all right, I think I cover for everything. And then I was like, wait, Choice Specs and Critical Hit. It's kind of similar damage. I ended up going with the Critical Kiss, which I think ended up being like, the best idea I could have had. So shout out Carney Asada for helping me prep all week. Cause talking through that process with him is like what got me to critical hit kiss. And I was like, you know what? The damage is so similar. It's worth it. And it was definitely a, a good move in the end too, because you were able to switch through your moves. And once, when the first pre-match uh, screen started and you saw the teams, he didn't have Heatran, he which was huge Heatran. for you. Because I took and off Boris Spear. I'm pretty sure on stream you were like, well, since he doesn't have Heatran, this Togekiss kind of goes in. Yeah. And that's exactly what happened. You were able to, because you didn't throw a choice move on it, you were able to pivot in between all the moves that were super effective enough and put a lot of offensive pressure on pretty much both Pokemon. Because yeah. even though you weren't super effectively hitting that Togetic, when you were hitting because it was crits, you were putting out like solid enough damage to be a threat because then at that point even if he's following me or something like that you're putting on enough damage to where your other pokemon as long as it's not the light part because the light part was doing nothing, with nothing. Snarls, nothing. <laughs> could put off i'll put enough damage to where it's taking it out and then you're getting the pokemon advantage so you're putting constant pressure on everything that he has which was a real key like he like he just he could not get the offensive pressure that was coming from that Togekiss off of him enough to be able to to work in that game. So it was really well done. And yeah, I got really lucky I didn't see Tyranitar or uh, Heatran because those were the two things that stopped my Togekiss the most. So I was very happy I built this game plan, expect, like having to stop those two with other Pokemon. And then I didn't even have to stop those two with anyone because they weren't there. So again, 50% of the time it works every time. Scopeland's uh, critical hit Togekiss was really, it saved my ass. Six kills in this matchup, man. Came through clutch. I got both psychic critical hits when I needed to. Uh, the only time I really attacked when I needed a crit and didn't get it was on Whimsicott, which is fine because it's a fucking Whimsicott. You know, so I, I, a flamethrower, if it crits, it KOs. I didn't KO, so it didn't crit. And then I want to talk about Destiny Bond Gengar for a second. I did not see that coming at all. I am so happy he didn't test it out in, like, any showdown games to see if it went two times in a row. Because I guess, like, he... And that turn where I dazzling gleamed into Gengar's Destiny Bond is really what won me the game three. Because then he couldn't dazzling... A uh, Destiny Bond the next turn, and I was just able to get the KO. You know, so that... It, it was a lot of things going in my favor. I'm happy he didn't realize... Because him and his prep partner told me after... They're like, I thought Destiny Bond could work twice in a row. Like, I didn't realize it just failed automatically. So I, I'm yeah. very happy they didn't realize that. I did, that. because I've used that against or with with people in prep this past season a few times, actually. Mm. I've put Destiny Bond on things. So that's really interesting that you said that. Because I, I found that out the hard way, like week three or something like that. I figured it would have worked like Protect, where it's a roll to work two times in a row. But no, it auto-fails the second time. Yeah, because it automatically takes kills a Pokemon that hits it, it, it is uh, purposely broke up by the game. I like that. I like that a lot. But all right. And then, uh, yeah, well, we have a lot of insight on this match because it's my match. So, again, with the biases. But I hope you guys don't mind. And then uh, you got anything else on this one, though, before we move on? I think we covered it very nope. in detail. 
Yeah, so let's move on to this game. This was our only match not streamed this week. Snom was able to take the 2-0 victory on Matt, our other co-host, who is unfortunately not able to join us after the new year at this time. I'm not able to do another time. So I'm sorry. We, we miss Matt very much. And I'm sure Matt wishes he could have some prep time back for this one, man. Because the 2-0 victory, he only got three kills, two with Tajimaduro, one with Braviary. Snom crushed it with Crocodile getting four, Grimmsnarl getting one, Electric Silvalli getting one, and Charizard getting two. So Snom spread out his kills, was able to put on a show this week. And uh, good for Snom getting the victory. I'm coming for you, Snom. Snom's actually one of the two moderators I have on this channel, too. Nothing but love for Snom, but he's the opponent this week. I, I really want to take him down and make it to the third round of the playoffs. But, uh, Jax, yeah. what do you got on this one? Uh, I was talking with, with Matt briefly uh, after this, and he said he had Matt had some bad switch-ins. Yeah. Um, it's a damage that Snom was doing. Snom also had a risky uh, play hitting Braviary with the, the electric so um, multi-attack from the Sil Valley while Toga tomorrow uh, was still on the field with the lightning rod. But, but he, he had switched, switched it out. Uh, so he took the lightning rod out the turn that multi-attack happened. So it must have been a great read from Snob to be yeah. able to take out the Braviary. Braviary being um, Matt's main um, offensive threat. Um, that that match, um, oh, well, one of his, well, it, his main offensive threats. So if you look at um, some switch ins, and he tried to use a, a Will O Wisp in Misty Terrain, unfortunate oh. for Matt to uh, early on in the match. You hate to see it. Yeah, no, I wanted a rematch with Matt, to be honest. I'm not going to lie. I was rooting for Matt in this one just because I wanted a rematch. But now I'm a little relieved I don't get that rematch because his team just matches up really well into mine. And you said that Braviary is, was his main attack mod because Arcanine and Feeny are the next two you would use. I'd say Amoongus, Tojimadoro, and Lipart are mostly for support. So yeah, once he once Snob took out that Braviary, he was really able to uh put in work. Mm-hmm. And Electric yeah, uh, the the predictions that he must have had on on switches because I know Matt in uh in prep me and Matt Matt was switching a lot. Uh, yeah. Which it's it's funny because all of Snom's Pokemon half I had on one team and half I had on another team. Oh, like even so I he had was the Electric Silvalli and everything. He was prepared. <laughs> so it's like he combined the best parts of both teams that I had prepped Matt with, and Matt was switching a lot. Um, yeah. but he just must have predicted the the switches really really well. So, uh, well done to to Snom to pick up a two zero victory and uh, advance in the playoffs. Yeah, I can't wait for my match with Snom. Sunday, 5 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. Pacific. I'm fucking excited. All right. And do we got anything else on this one before we move on to the next one, Jax? Nope. Done and done. We got 2D versus Anti, which was one of the more surprising games, I would say. No offense to Anti. 2D has been one of the better people and, like, competitors here. Tough fucking schedule. I expected 2D to win this one. I'm not going to lie. I, I was sleeping on Anti. And Anti showed me exactly why I shouldn't be. Fucking came out swinging. Game one, we see 2D go Metacross Suicune into the Ndidi Clink Clang lead. And Anti did something I didn't know Clink Clang could do in Trick Room. Clink Clang set Trick Room, which shot the fuck out of me when I was watching this on the showdown replay they sent. I had no idea I got Trick Room. 2D was doing a great job then stalling the Trick Room with switches, protect. He was able to U-turn after the expanding forces. So his Incineroar would take the Expanding Force U-turn so the Pokemon coming in wouldn't take damage. Protect, switch back into Incineroar. So he was really great job, like, stalling the Trick Room. Kling Kling missed a Giga Impact and then was able to uh, connect with a Giga Impact with a Helping Hand Giga Impact into Incineroar, which was not enough to KO. And then Incineroar was able to get the KO onto a D. Alola Marowak came in with the last turn, turn of Trick Room up. And uh, Tootie brings out the Incineroar again, intimidates the Alola Marowak, and uh, Flare Blitz goes into Reggie Drago at minus one, and I was like, that's not going to KO, but it burns. And I'm like, that's not a big deal, until I saw Tootie Dragon Dance. Tootie was running a physical Drago that got burned from a Flare Blitz, so that's just so unlucky, because the minus one Flare Blitz, you like, it's not that much of a threat. Then the physical Drago coming out, getting burned is huge, because now Drago's at plus one is not going to do half as you know it's going to do half the damage he thinks it's going to do before so 2d's 
plan just got so fucked up at that point, I think. The uh, Incineroar fake outed, the Drago Dragon Dance, then uh, the Marowak was able to KO the Incineroar Boomerang, Suicune comes in Scald, Marowak survives, and, uh, oh no, Marowak protected, and then the Drago Fire Fangs the Clink Clink, misses the Fire Fang, Clink Clink is able to get another uh, Trick Room set up. That's when we see the Shadow Bone go into Suicune. At minus one, it's not enough to KO. Suicune's able to KO the Marowak. And uh, then Kartana comes in and just cleans it up from there. Anti was able to take the uh, game one in a commanding fashion after, like, you know, the misses, the burn. It was really cool to see Anti shut down Tootie's plan. Because you it was obvious Tootie came in with a plan. And Anti just shut it down with every... Like the trick room clink claim, the burn onto Marowak. I mean, the burn from Marowak onto Reggie Drago, which of course wasn't planned, but it happened. So it, it was just part of anti shutting down Tootie's plan. And then the Marowak at minus one was just not doing enough uh, damage from anti. So I thought Tootie was still alive at one point. But it, it was a great game one. In game two, again, after the super close game one, I was so excited to see. We see two different leads. We see uh, the Zapdos and. The Gardevoir into Tootie's Metagross and Oranguru. And Anti is just balls to the wall. Pop, pop, pop. Let's fucking go. Zapdos Thunderbolts the uh, Metagross doing like 60%. Moonblast into Oranguru. Doesn't do that much. Oranguru Brutal Swings activating a weakness policy. And then uh, is able to KO the Gardevoir with Flash Cannon. Kartana comes in. Sacred Swords the Metagross. Which Tootie switched into Instant. Instant eats it because the Sacred Swords minus one. Oranguru eats a Thunderbolt. Expanding Force does like 30% into Zapdos, double protect from Anti to scout the moves, then a Sacred Sword critical hits Incineroar, T-Bolt KOs the Oranguru, and it's a low health Metagross, and like, uh, oh, and I can't read what was left for Tootie, versus Zap and Cart, but the Zap and Cart were able to close it out for Anti, Anti won this one 2-0, I highly recommend you guys watching this one if you missed it, this was one of my favorite matches to watch in a while, even though it was 2-0, it felt closer, Again, Tootie's plans felt like they just got shut down by Anti. Anti just shut down everything Tootie was trying to do. And Jax, did you happen to see this one? What you got on this one? Yeah, it was like I said, it was it was a pretty interesting match. I love the the um the physical Drago. I did not see that. Uh, I'm guessing he was I'm guessing he was running physical because it's the only way that Reggie Drago gets a fire move, uh... which would, would definitely get somebody off guard because the fire thing. Um, would definitely be able to take out um Clink Clang. The Clink Clang and um because it's four times effective would be able to take out the origami sword. Yeah, you're right. And then those two have trouble putting damage onto Reggie Drago usually. Exactly. But the only problem with that being that you actually have to be able to hit. Yeah, the Fire Fang miss was huge. Fang. He missed it twice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he had a the fire thing miss happened two times, which was that was ended up being um, the nail in the, the real killer for him because yeah. if you can't hit the Kartana or uh, hit the Kling Clang, then it's kind of null and void. You know what I mean? And the the miss when he got the the trick room up with the Kling Clang, especially game two, because he kind of or game one, because he kind of. Game one was very, very close, I felt. Yeah, I did too. It was really like you think it, we thought it would be played. Um, both players played very, very well, going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And then at the end, Anti ended up getting that Kartana in position to where it got a critical KO. And then once it got that critical KO, it just did what it, what Kartana does, picked up Steam, and basically so cool. Steam rolled through the rest of the match. It was interesting how in game two, Anti was able to see what was going on when he saw the physical Reggie Drago and ended up leading with the Zapdos and pr pretty much put so much offensive pressure right from the first move, yeah. taking like 70, 70 or 75% to the Metagross yep. on turn one. That was pretty impressive. When I saw That's that, I was like, wait, how much did that just do? Yeah, it did 60%, <laughs> I mean? and then the Brutal Swing brought it down to like 25% health. Exactly. So he he couldn't even really take advantage of getting that weakness policy off, which was huge for anti because it yeah. put he knew that he didn't have the speed at that point. 
Yeah. Yeah, he needed to bulk some hits, and he just wasn't able to, you know? I mean, Tootie needed to bulk some hits, and Anti was like, I'm not going to let you. Anti was so much faster than him that even though he got the weakness policy off, it didn't matter yeah. because one more hit from that Zapdos was taking that out. Good point. Yeah, yeah no. Which was pretty impressive, and that made it even even rougher when he had to switch it out, and then he ends up, um, having the Oranguru in, which did end up taking a hit, but couldn't take too many of the hits, and ended up, you know, getting those two Pokemon taken out, and then you're left with a 25% Metagross in there as kind of a savior. It was really rough, but uh, Anti played really incredibly really? well. I was surprised at... Uh, we shouldn't be surprised. He's been a hell of a player. He's been a hell of a player. Him. Yeah, I know. Well, with the way that Tootie was playing, that's what it the, is. The latter half of the season, I mean, that's exactly it, what it is. It it came down to to making the right calls at the beginning of each game, and Anti did it. And you know, one hundred percent to him, he he like one hundred percent ended up kind of crushing it that game too for the two zero sweep. I love seeing Anti use that Cartana inside and outside of Trick Room very well. He was like, even if I don't outspeed the Metagross in Trick Room, I'm still going to Night Slash it, do some big boy damage. He, like, he Sacred Sword outsped outside of Trick Room. So, like, that Cortana was doing damage inside and outside of Trick Room, which you don't see often. Usually, like... A... Yeah, and when it was outside of Trick Room, wasn't it slower? No, it was faster than, than... Metagross outside. Slower. No, I don't know. I think it was faster outside and faster inside. But it was slower than the Suicune or something. Yeah, it was like a because the it, was going first. I think it, so. It was faster. It was faster than the Metagross, but slower than the Suicune to be able to use it in Trick Room. We got to look up those uh, the speed stats and everything. We're we'll asking Anti another day. May have, I, I'm not sure, but I think he may have undersped the Reggie Drago too oh in God. TR. Yeah, I think it might did. have been set up to specifically underspeed Reggie Drago to do damage because I'm pretty sure. It sacred sorted the Reggie Drago to take its health down, so that it couldn't um, dragon move dragon energy for a lot of damage. So I think it undersped some of Tootie's uh, Pokemon specifically in Trick Room. Dude, so uh, such cool prep from Anti. Anti such cool prep yeah. from Anti. You love to see it. Yeah. But the, it, it, that also threw me off when I was watching it because it was faster than certain Pokemon and slower than other Pokemon. Yep. So that meant that it would be faster than certain Pokemon in Trick Room. Like in Trick Room, it would have been faster than the Suicune, so it would have been able to outspeed the Suicune Leaf Blade, and Leaf Blade it to kill it. Oh, dude, this was really, really well cool. prepped. Really well prepped from Anti. And again, shout out to Tootie for the amazing season two. Shout out to Anti. Good luck next week versus Angelo. No joke. And then, uh, do we got anything else on this one before we move on to the next one? Nope. Done and done. We got Turtle versus Pops. Turtle was able to take the 2-0 victory. I thought this one was closer than it's, like, the 2-0 says it was. And Jax, I've been talking a lot, so take it away, my friend. Yeah, I think this game actually, it, it seemed closer than it really was. Turtle dominated, uh, actually, now that I'm looking at my notes. Yeah, yeah. Tur Turtle... Turtle output a lot, you know, he kind of handled the, he had the more Peko, um, handled in switching out and switching in for fake out pressure really, really well. Great use of um, the fake out pressure. He protected well in some very certain spots with the Celesteela, Celesteela once again showing that it's an absolute monster. Celesteela um, got a new Celesteela. Yeah, it's just, um, he knew, be, he put Pops in positions where Pops had one way of going to be able to take out turtles threats so he blocked very well like i said with protects and stuff like that and then took out the threats to his celestia before they could do any real damage and i think kind of i hate to say it like this i think pops kind of lost in the prep because you brought three pokemon weak to celestia in game one and darm was the only answer but once celestia snowballs the darm is it's gonna have a truck time handling it but Air Slash, yeah. Flash Cannon, KO, so, Tapu Lele, Slurpuff, and Rillaboom, man. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah. 
No, that's that's fine. You're completely correct. I mean, um, yeah, and um, Andrew's correct too. He said that he didn't prep. He didn't oh. practice against people when on stream. He was just he made he went out and actually did his EV calculations, put in the moves right, but then didn't end up prepping with somebody. Which this could kind of show you how that could be a detriment because, I mean, I personally view Tapu Lele as the worst psychic setter because of its specific uh, weakness to steel. And there are so many Pokemon that are used in this uh, game specifically with steel moves, um, especially when somebody has stab steel with cell steel because it's such a good Pokemon. There's so many Pokemon that are fast that have steel moves and stuff like that. You really have to use it specific sort of ways. And to bring po multiple Pokemon that have an adverse effect when it comes to steel, like you said, it puts you kind of in a bind. You have to play really, really well. And Turtle was able to put himself in situations where he's using that cell steel safely. Yeah, ex extremely safe, but using it offensively safe. Yeah. And when it came to it, Pops had very minimal windows where he was able to try to handle that Celesteela. And all he had to do was protect and then switch out and then switch something back in. And all of a sudden, the threat to his Celesteela is gone and he doesn't have to worry about it anymore. He could keep putting more offensive pressure off of that Celesteela. Plus, Pops didn't realize after the first time or two that um, the RK9 had switched in that it wasn't Intimidate. It was Flashfire. Yeah, he didn't realize till the end of the match that when he fire moved into the Celesteela, he had to switch into the Arcanine, and it just raised the Arcanine's attack, which was pretty cool. So, um, I think Turtle just had a really, really solid really game solid plan. plan. He built correctly to um completely protect his offensive pivot, and he did. You know, he broke it down exactly the match down exactly the way that he needed to to keep that out there. And so let's see, it just shows how much work it can do, dude. And yeah, there was one point in game two. I just want to mention this too. I thought Pops did the right play and just got punished for Celesteela being as strong as it is. So Pops was like, I got to switch in my Rillaboom to take the Meteor Beam. But then a plus two Meteor Beam just KO'd Rillaboom. It was just like, all right, there's nothing you could do there. Like, there's, <laughs> there's nothing you could do there. If a plus two meteor beam is just going to KO your Rillaboom, which is, it's not, yeah. it, it was just like, there's nothing he could have done. It was just, yeah, it was, it was already set up so much. And he did, like you said, make the correct switch in. But at that point, like you said, when Celestia starts to snowball, it's hard to stop. There's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> and, and, and yeah, it, the, I, even I was like, wow, that took out from there. I mean, it, a full health I guess, boom. I guess it wasn't yeah. like especially defensive at all, but still, that's impressive, man. It's fucking impressive. And uh, Behani and Turtle both said the same thing, which I thought was interesting too. So Turtle after was like, "I'm very happy the Slurpuff was Grassy Seed over being Psychic Seed." And then Behani on his stream said, "Wow, you would have." I think the Psychic Seed would have been a little bit better for that special defense boost. So it's just two things that two high-level players noticed after. And that's where the team building is so important. Because let's say Pops notices that, maybe he could have survived one more Flash Cannon, make it a 3-hit KO instead of a 2-hit KO. You know, something like that. That really would have made a huge difference in this game. So that's... It's, yeah, when you're looking at the pre-match prep, like for the team breakdown too, you have to take into account the the more offensive threats are they special or are they physical? Selly can you know be both I mean? really. Selly can be heavy slam yeah. leech seed too. You know? Yeah, but leech seed is less offensive to me. Yeah, it's more you know defensive. I mean? Yeah, it's more defensive and then the heavy but, slam is just a move to slap on it when you're using yeah, leech seed. Yeah, like for for Celestila um it gets earthquake, it gets rock slide, yeah, it gets stone it's edge. Big time, yeah, it, it's big time thing is special. You know what I mean? It could really get out of control if you're using a special. It's got such a crazy special move pool. And, but yeah, that's the thing. It goes one way or another. You know, had he brought physical Celesteela or physical Arcanine with a physical Rillaboom and a physical, you know what I mean? It, it the 
that's the thing with with Turtles team. It's it's really diverse. You could go physical or special. Arcanine's one of so those Pokemon like, too. Yeah. Like, yeah. No, Arcanine's definitely one of those Pokemon that could go either way. You're one hundred percent right. Oh wow, dude. They, uh, yeah, Turtles got a scary team. This Turtles got a scary team. But all right, are you, Jax, you got anything else on this one? Or before I keep interrupting you, I apologize for that too. By the way. Yeah, no, I'm good. All right, and on to the next one, which is Behaney versus Fox, which I thought was a great match too. Two of the moderators in this one, and uh, yeah, Behaney had a plan going in, and it fucking worked. So we see Nihilego and Indeedee lead versus Togekiss and Dragonite. Uh, Togekiss switches out for the Excadrill. Brutal Swing comes out from Nihilego. Expanding Force. Oh, I mean, Brutal Swing comes out, activating a weakness policy on Indeedee Mail. Expanding Force. One hit KO is a Dragonite and does 60% to Excadrill turn one. It was just, oh shit. Boom, bop, boom, 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 bop, boom. Behaney came out swinging. That's when we see the uh, Gigalith come in. Now Excadrill takes a speed with Sand Control. I mean with the Sand coming in. So now it's uh, Excadrill and Gigalith versus the Nihilego and Didi. Double Protect onto, uh, from Fox's side. Behaney brings out the Gyarados to check if it's White Herb Excadrill because it was White Herb Excadrill the first time they played. Fox did bring the White Herb again. So you just see the damage output from Fox. It, it, like, the damage Fox really cares about. He must have calced it out for something. But I don't see any Pokemon on Behaney's side that could have got O-Code at neutral that wouldn't have got O-Code at minus one. Do you know what I'm saying? I don't think the White Herb was, like, the most ideal mo item. From Fox's side, but Fox had a plan for it, man. Fo you know, he's like, I don't want to be minus one. I want to be neutral instead of minus one 100% of the time. Then, uh, extra drill KOZ and DD. Uh, Fox Iron Heads instead of, uh, Rock Slides with the Gigalith on the Gyarados switching, which was huge, too. Then, uh, Zapdos comes in for the Indeedy switch, and the Zapdos outspeeded the extra drill in the sand shocked the shit out of me. I was like, wait, what just happened? So Excadrill goes down. Gyarados does a nice chunk to Gigalith with Waterfall. And Gigalith uh, does a nice chunk back to both. Togekiss comes back in. It's Zapdos and Gigalith. Zap I mean, Zapdos KOs Gigalith. Uh, Gyarados hits the Togekiss. And the Dazzling Gleam and Sand Chip are able to make it a one-on-one. -on -one, a Focus Sash Nihilego versus 60% health Togekiss. Behaney was able to take game one. So that was nuts. This was a crazy game to me, I thought. They were, the Excadrill not being able to outspeed the Galar Zapdos was shocking to me. I gotta look up those Pokemon speed stats, because Behaney Choice scarfed it. So even with the Sand, it wasn't able to do it. And that comes into play this game, too. So then we see the Mandibuzz Excadrill into the Diggersby, Diggersby Zapdos. Uh, Mandibuzz gets Tailwind up. Excadrill and Diggersby both protect. Zapdos coachings the Diggers Beast Protect, and Zapdos is faster than Excadrill in the Tailwind, too. So Diggers Beast survives the Iron Head and the foul play with this two defense boosts from the coaching. He hits them with a plus two Rock Slide, and even with the Charty Berry, it did surprisingly little into Mandibuzz. And he, like, I, it didn't do that much into Excadrill either. I was surprised by the damage output from a plus two Diggers Beast. Gyarados comes back in, uh, foul play in Stone Edge, KOs, oh, a, yeah, Diggersby lives a rank and dies to a foul play. The Stone Edge crit KOs Amanda Buzz, and I pause this here. Fox looked down at his notes and didn't see it say Tailwind ended. So Fox was under the presumption that Tailwind was still up and Sand was up. So he's like, I am the speed god. I outspeed everything. But the Tailwind ended, only the Sand was up. We know Zapdos outspeeds. Zapdos Thunder Kicks Excadrill. Waterfall goes into Gigalith, flinches the Gigalith, and that's when this game ended, I think. It was right there. That swing of momentum where Fox thinks he has a speed but doesn't was what was able to take the game to for Behaney. Thunderous Kick also gets a defense drop into the Togekiss the next turn after it follows me, ensuring that that Stone Edge was going to KO if it didn't already. So if Stone Edge doesn't KO a neutral Togekiss, a minus one defense Togekiss, it got to KO every time. And that's when uh, Behini was able to take this one. It was a Gigalith versus a Nihilego and Zapdos. It was over.
this was a really fun one to watch, man. And Jax, I know you said you didn't catch this one. So you got anything on the notes you just heard? Jax, you there, bud? Yeah, I'm here. Um, nothing other than the fact that unless Excadrill has at least, I think it's uh, what, 44 EVs in its speed, Galar Zapdos outspeeds with a timid 252 choice car. So that was had to have been what it was at to outspeed in sand. Wait, so Excadrill needs less than 44? Needs at least 44. What's yeah. Zapdos' speed stat? I know Extra Drill is 80. 100. Oh, okay. Extra Drill is 80. 80. Zapdos yeah. is 100. So at 252, Tibbet Nature or Jolly Nature, whichever one, uh, Extra Drill needs at least 44 EVs in speed to be able to speed tie. Mm. So it was probably not speed invested. It was more like bulk and attack invested. It had to be because the Zapdos yeah. was choice scarf too. Yeah. So crazy. Um interesting. Interesting and, and once the that match goes on and you find that out, that's huge information. Huge to have to know that, that Excadrill doesn't have speed EVs in it. It changes the way Behaney approaches the game, I think. You know, and yeah, sure. and the white herb would lead you to believe it's not invested in speed too, even before that. Whiter makes me think it's more an attack, like, bulky base, too. So, right. it, interesting team build from Fox here. I don't know if I would have went with the White Herb Excadrill two times into Behaney's team, but Fox knows what he's doing, and he thought the White Herb probably helped him more than any other item, which is, like, cool to see, because, you know, that's not, again, one of the items I really consider on Excadrill a lot, me being the other Excadrill owner. So, this was a cool one to see. And, Jax, you got anything on this one before we move on? This is the last match of playoffs week one. Uh, no, just uh, well played Bobby Haney, and yeah. I love the uh, the weakness policy in DD Tech. Loved it. I absolutely loved it. And let's MVP go. style. Yeah, but it did not get Pokemon yeah. Kill Leader. So we took out Pokemon of the Week because there's just too few Pokemon. So the Pokemon Kill Leader, I'm going to do like Pokemon of the Week, I decided. Instead of listing out like the six Pokemon that got a couple of kills, we're going to just give it to the top dog. But the top dog happened to be two Dop Dogs, and they both happen to be flying types. Turtle Celesteel and my Togekiss both got six KOs this week. Shout out to me and Turtle making the kill leaders list. Both of us with six KOs in a pivotal week one matchup. And uh, yeah, I, I'm very proud of myself for being able to get the six KOs. I know Turtle was loving the Celesteel with the six KOs. And Jax, you got anything on our Pokemon kill leaders this week? Uh, not much. I love love the uh, the way that both of you guys use those Pokemon. I also want to shout out all the NDDs used. Indeed, he was crushing it this week. Yeah. I had four KOs with an NDD. KD, who played against me, had four KOs with an NDD. And Behaney had his his NDD working with that weakness policy tech in chaos too. So it was a um, big big week for for all of that, you know, going on. It was pretty awesome. So, um, but but no, it doesn't hold a candle to uh the way that either one of these were uh, were used. Definitely, um, game plans built around both um, the Togekiss and the Celesteel this week, and both of them were, were worked to perfection, and uh, as I'm guessing, as planned. And in that same vein, I want to shout out the Ndidi line. I want to shout out the Togekiss line. My Togekiss got six, Pengy's Togetic got three, and Fox's Togekiss got two. So Togekiss and Ndidi, or the Toge and Togepi was even seen in KD's match too. So we saw a bunch of the Togetic... I don't want to see Ndidi next week. Yeah, so we saw a bunch of Ndidis and Togepis running around muck this weekend in the playoffs. So that's something to note going forward in the uh, this format of draft. Really cool to see all these Pokemon shine, man. And uh, crazy that it was all the same family of Pokemon, too, in the draft where it limits the amount, you know, which Pokemon could see. We're seeing a lot of repeats, which is really cool to see how strong some of the Pokemon ended up being in this format. Yeah. For in this format especially, I mean, Celesteel is good in any format, I think. But uh, in this format especially, the Togekiss line and the Ndidi line were incredibly strong yep. all season. Yep. Like, honestly, all season. I know the Ndidi for me was my kill leader. And it's Ndidi uh, female, team. not even the offensive one most of the time. Yeah, yeah. I used the, the 
bulky one that that gets follow me <laughs> and stuff and it was just uh it, it it's an incredibly versatile and especially underrated mod, I, I believe. I, I believe so, too, and I have a much different respect for it now than I did before this season, seeing it outside of Dynamax 2. But I think that's it for the playoff week one matches. Let's get right into the playoff week two matches. We only have four matches to go over, Jack, so let's get right into it. Here's the first side of the bracket. I uh oh, skipped ahead for a second. Here's the first side of the bracket, though. We got KJ getting the bye. We got KD beating yourself. We got me beating Penny. We got Snob beating Matt. So KJ versus KD in the 1-8 matchup and me versus Snob in the 12-13 matchup. So let's get right into it. We got KD, KJ versus KD. I'm picking KJ in this one. I, I said it on my stream after. I would not be surprised if KD won. I was talking a little smack too. I was like, all right, so KJ is going to win. I should start prepping for KJ after I'm done prepping for Snob. But no, like KD has a solid chance to win. KJ just said in the chat, too, he doesn't want to see KD's Meow Stick. I mean, not Meow Stick, Indeedy. And he's probably going to see the Meow Stick, too. That Meow Stick mail, that Indeedy mail, those Pokemon put on a lot of pressure. KJ's got a very bulky team. After ending the season 6-0, and I can't pick against KJ in his first playoff match. So I got to go KJ here. And Jax, who you got? <laughs> um, originally, I was going to pick KD, but I am also going to pick KJ. So clean just because, KJ. like, like you said, the the bulk that he has on his team is yeah, is it's hard, really right? impressive. I know KD uses um, Sil Valley really, really well, really well, um, along with the Ndidi, um, and the Meowstic on his team and everything. But uh, I mean, there's a lot for that Sil Valley to have to cover. Um, and credit to KD, he usually uses that Sil Valley to cover whatever weakness that he has on his team. Yeah. Um, as far as offensively output, but uh, there's a lot to have to cover into to KJ's team, and you have to have your stuff out on out on that field for a very very long time. I wouldn't be surprised if I if KD brings out some sauce, you know, I and, and so. try some crazy crazy tech and stuff like that to try to pick up quick KOs. Um, but yeah, it's gonna be interesting to to see how he's gonna attack uh, whatever KJ can bring because he can bring a lot. You can bring a lot, and a lot of it could take some multiple hits. So I'm excited to see this one. I think I'm selfishly rooting for KD because I don't want to see KJ's 6-0 and team, potentially 7-0 and if he wins this week. So let's go, KD. I'm rooting for you, bud. And in the next matchup, we got me versus Snob. I'm, of course, picking myself. So, Jax, who you got in this one? Uh, I'm also going to end up going with you on this one. Um, Snob's had a roller coaster ride of a season. Yeah. A lot of ups and downs, you know, he loses two, wins two, loses, wins, stuff like that. So, um, his, he's got a team that has a really interesting composition. Very as interesting. As far as what, what he can use. Uh, although I know from from using it to prep with Matt that it actually is more synergetic than, than it looks on paper. Um, but you have some things that can... that go very, very fast and do very, very direct things. And you also have stuff on your team that can can switch what the what it actually does. So um, it's going to come down to pretty much what you're bringing and, you know, what he, what he, you know, how it does with what, you know, how, handling what Snom brings, because we all know Snom thinks outside the box the way that he does things. I'm excited but, to see uh, which six he brings. Just in my yeah. early stages of prep, I'm like, I, I've i really, because I I'm, I started prep literally like a little bit last night. Oh, Tom's going to win it all? I hope so, man. I fucking hope I win it all. I started prep looking at it a little bit last night, like, all right, I could do this into this lead, this into this lead. But it really is dependent on which six he brings. So I'm excited to see he's really switched up his Pokemon well. He's brought, yeah. look at all the numbers. You know, like, he, he's brought all his Pokemon a couple of times. I've yet to bring Thwacky, Stoutland. I brought Blastoise for the first time now that I just got it after the, you know. So there's a lot of stuff that I'm excited to see what he brings. And I'm excited to see what I end up bringing, too. Because I really don't know yet. So this is going to be a fun one. Yeah, it's it's definitely going to be a fun match to watch. I Sunday, 5 p.m. Eastern. And let's get into the other side of the bracket. So we got Angelo, who got the bye. Anti, who beat Tootie. Turtle who beat Pops and Behaney who beat Fox. So we have the two seed playing the 10 seed and Angelo playing Anti. 
And we have the six seed turtle playing the three seed Behaney. Oh my God. The, I'm glad I'm not on this side of the bracket. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, that's a thick side of the bracket, boy. Only one upset on this side, which was anti over uh, Tootie. And uh, yeah, on this side, I, I forgot to mention me and Snom both upset our opponents. Snom, the 13 seed, beat the four seed. Me, the 12 seed, beat the five seed. But yeah, in this one, the only upset was a 10 beating the seven. And then the six and the three seed both were able to take the spots. And yeah, do we see chalk again? Do we see the. I wonder how many upsets we see. 12 13, I don't know. It's not really an upset. It's either game. 8 1, does KD upset KJ? 10 2, does anti upset Angelo? 3 6, does turtle upset Behaney? I'm excited. But uh, who do you got in Angelo versus anti? Let's get right into it. Oh, shit. The stream disconnected? Yeah, you're down. Oh, no. I'm sorry, everyone. So I got the YouTube recording still. It's buffering. Sorry, everyone. It looked like it looked like it was back for a minute too. Yeah, I hate that little. It gives me a beep. It it gives me a little red beep. It, it pops up red and then it beeps, and I'm like, "Fuck that noise!" So once I heard that noise, <laughs> are we back? No, it says reconnecting again. Yeah. Yeah, yeah there's a beep. I'm sorry. So, yeah, Jax, they're going to hear us loud and clear in the YouTube recording. So that's still going to come through on YouTube, you know? Right. Yeah. So. Well, uh, do you want to keep going? Yeah, no, we absolutely want to keep going. So sorry, right. well, everyone watching live. We're going to keep it you're back. going. You didn't miss anything. It'll be without pauses on youtube all right so yeah we we're 51 um, minutes into the recording but who you got in angelo versus anti i am gonna go with angelo i wanted to go with anti because he's playing really really well and i would not be surprised if he ends up picking up a win here yeah which would be crazy oh my god um, for for him to with that two and three record to be you know rolling through playoffs like that but Angelo's got uh, a lot to have to deal with for Anti. And, uh, you know, he it's going to, we know it's going to have to be a really, really well played game for Anti to pick it up. Not so, well, and once again, wouldn't be surprised if he did. Um, but I just think Angelo's going to have a little bit too much uh, to, and coming off of that loss at the end of the season, too. Um, he'll be on a, he'll be on a rager to, uh, to get that corrected and make a statement for these playoffs. You're actually right. I was going to pick anti until you just said that Angelo's first loss of the season was the last week of the season. So we know he's going to come out was, what three weeks ago, something like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's a lot of time to have to sit there on a loss. So now that brings into question rest versus rust. You know, is Angelo going to be a little rusty, well-rested? Is Anti going to be warmed up in playoff mode because he's been battling consistently? So I'm excited to see how this one goes out. My lighting is immaculate. Do you want to see my lighting setup? I have these two motherfuckers. I got them on a Twitter account, Fat Kid Deals. And I just uh, have them at awkward angles posted up so they're not directly in my eye. So thank you. Because I really try with the lighting. I really try. And then I flick this light off. The light. I have a light bulb up here. I feel like it's too bright. So thank you. Shout out Fat Kid Twitter, Twitter account. Fat Kid Deals on Twitter. Great fucking Twitter account. But uh, yeah, I, I think I got to go Angelo in this one too. I don't think it's going to be easy. Even though Celesteela has 22 KOs. And if Angela wins, it might get like five or six KOs again. Anti is going to make this hard on him. Angelo, Anti is going to make this very hard on you to win. And I'm excited to see what ends up happening. But yeah, I'm rolling with Angelo in this one. Just because uh, after that last loss, I five and one season, I can't pick against him in his first playoff game. I just absolutely can't. So yeah, that's why I got to pick Angelo in this one. And our next match, our last... Um it's been extremely difficult for people to keep Angelo out of Trick Room. And once Angelo gets into Trick Room, 
his team can go crazy. But you know that begs the question. Anti doesn't have. I'm. I yeah. I want to see how this one works out. Anti's got some tricks up his sleeve. I don't want to talk too much specifics of the match, but the 22 kills from Celestila, the five and one record. I just can't pick against Angelo in this one. So all right, the last match of the week, uh, we got Turtle versus Behaney and Jax. Who do you got in this one? Um. Yeah, Behaney got snatched that in DD Mail, dude. And the and the the Nia Lego right at the end of the season. And we saw him use one of those plans. He you know, those two Pokemon came into play big time for his Fox. Yeah. Oh, this is really tough. Both these guys play really, really well. Turtle's team is fucking good, man. It's fucking good. Not saying Behini's team isn't, but I feel like Turtle's got one of the better rosters in this entire. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with Behini though because Turtle has made mistakes. Hmm. He's made like small mistakes, but he's made mistakes. And Behini always capitalizes. Admittedly, by him on his own stream, yeah. like the first two weeks, he said that he made mistakes. He made mistakes playing. Um, other weeks that I had noticed, and if you make a mistake against Behini, he makes you pay for it. Yeah. That is one thing that Behini is the best at doing that since I've started watching him play, is if you make a mistake and he's there, he's going to jump all over that and pull out wins because of it. So I think that I just think that he's he's like the Patriots. <laughs> you make mistakes and he, he capitalizes off of them to win. I'm seeing ghosts you out know? there, coach. Sam Darnold. Yeah, he may he may not he may not be the best at the beginning of it. His game plan is just really steady. You know what I mean? And he shows up in the playoffs, too. That's He it. waits for you to mess up, and once you mess up, that steadiness takes over, and, and it's your downfall. So I'm, I'm going to go with Bane. And he's made the playoffs every season I've been a part of the CBDO. He was, like, really close to that bye week. And I'm picking against him. I'm picking Turtle in this one. I think Turtle is going to pull the 6-3 upset and be able to play Angelo or Anti in the Crown Conference Finals, I believe it is, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah Crown Conference Finals. I don't know. But the Crown, I, I think... Oh, no, we're out of divisions and stuff. So, Armored and Crown, it's just Eastern and Western Conference Finals, I guess. But, yeah, no, I... I think I'm going Turtle in this one. I think I'm going Turtle in this one. I hate picking against Behaney. I usually just do it in the regular season to uh, hedge a little bit against everyone else. You know, because I think everyone else... To win the recap show prediction giveaway, I want to pick against what everyone else is going with, and Behaney's usually one of the chalk picks. So if he gets upset, then I have a better chance of winning the box if I pick again. You know, that's my mentality with the regular season. I think I'm picking against him because I think Turtle's team is fucking strong. Prepping against it was not fun at all. I did not have fun Turtle week prepping against him. <laughs> you know, when I played Turtle, it was not a fun week. So yeah, I think, uh, I think Turtle's going to be able to get it out and play Angelo or Anti for the uh in the Elite Eight or in the top in the top four. Yeah, in the top four is next week. Oh my god. So yeah. yeah. Semifinals next week. In the semifinals. So yeah, the season's coming to an end. Sorry everyone for the stream uh issues towards the end there. Good luck to all our competitors. Follow at CPDL twelve on Twitter. And thank you again for coming out if you came out and watched this. This will be posted on YouTube sometime. I've been really bad with the YouTube uploads recently. I, I got to go in my uh, videos and just, like, organize all my videos and upload the ones. I play Snom Sunday, 5 p.m. 5 p.m. on Sunday. So I'm excited. And, uh, KD, I know you're going to be anxiously waiting that match. When do you play uh, KJ? Because that's actually important to me, too. That's when I'll know if I win who I'm playing. So I'm very curious about the KJKD matchup. They're very curious about my matchup. So I'm excited to see how this all shakes out, the CPDL playoffs, Season 5. I'm curious about everyone's matchup. Yeah. Yeah, I'm more focused on my <laughs> side of the bracket right now. I'm not gonna even going to lie. I'm going to let the side of death fight it out in uh, 9 p.m. tonight? Not tonight. Or Sunday, 9 p.m. Is KJKD tonight? No fucking way. <laughs> I don't believe so. Yeah, maybe Sunday, 9 p.m. 
So then both those matches will happen Sunday night, which is really cool. <laughs> I told KJ I'll be serious if you win. Yeah, no, dude, I'm going to win. Uh, no offense to Snob, I'm coming for the victory, and then I'm coming for whoever. I want to beat you, KD. I want to beat you. Yeah, me and KD, we haven't played yet, you know, so I'm excited. K Demarney 10. I'm coming for you if we get to see each other in the semifinals in the top four. I want to be the one that knocks you out, buddy. You know, you've been you've been an awesome person in here. It'll be a great litmus test to see where I'm at as a Pokemon competitor and battler. You know? Where am I? Am I able to beat KD yet? Fuck yeah or fuck no. So I'm excited to see how it shakes out. I'm going to end the YouTube recording here. Jax, do you got any last words for the stream? No, good luck to everybody. Uh, wish everybody luck this weekend. And may all of my predictions come true. May all of your predictions come true. And Katie said, Tom, you'll never beat me, robot face. I'm excited to try, man. I we've got I got to beat Snom and you got to beat KJ first. So we can't even be thinking about the hypothetical matchup, me versus you. Maybe we'll do one for fun after. But I just want to beat Snom. I, it's it's Snom week. I'm in Snom week right now. So I got to beat Snom before I can worry about you versus KJ. So I'm excited to see how it ends up. So I'm going to end the... You know, yeah, I'm going to end the stream here, guys. So thank you so much for coming out. And I'll see you all next time.